Oh, hey. Oh, hey. How's it going? Great. We have some podcast shit to get done, and we're going to go interview someone very special and near and dear to my heart. Mexican food tonight with wit. I'm gonna take you to my favorite spot. You gotta flick it like this. Not us being so burpy the whole podcast. <laughs> Drinking soda on the podcast. I'm like, <clears throat> sorry. Cut that out. Oh yeah, shit. Perfection. That's fresh. It could be like a little crispier. No, that's pretty crispy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> The following episode contains sensitive topics of suicide that could potentially trigger emotional distress or discomfort. Please listen with caution. Remember, it's okay to take a break or skip the episode if needed. Hi guys, welcome back to the Cheers podcast. I'm your host, Avery Woods, and we are in a new place today. Yay! We took a little road trip to see someone very special to me and someone that I love very much, and that is my friend Whitney Simmons. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Wit does not do a lot of interviews or podcast type of things, so mm-hmm. I feel very honored that you're here right now. I feel very honored to be on this podcast. No. I You just like radiate happiness and joy and beauty, and I just admire all the things about you. Thank so you. So I, I asked Wit to be on, and she said yes, and I about shit my pants. <gasps> I was so excited. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> Almost, because no, I was just so happy. <laughs> okay, so just a quick introduction for mm-hmm. yourself. Who is Whitney Simmons? Oh, my gosh. Oh, also, hold on. We're cheersing. Thank you for Cheers. being here. GVO. Um, Wit made very special beverages. She made a Coke Zero with a True Lime packet. Yes. And it's probably the most crispy thing I've ever had in my life, so I'm really sorry if I burp. I really will, too. It's fine. Mm. ASMR. Delicious. We also have two extra special guests, Navy and Indy, that are on the couch. So if you see them, I'm very happy about that. Me too. They're the cuddliest, sweetest dogs. They're I've my ever babies. Met. They're my whole world. I love them. Okay, so a quick intro for those that don't know Miss Whitney Simmons. Tell us about yourself. Oh my gosh. Where do I begin? You're Whitney Simmons. My name is Whitney Simmons. <gasps> Hi. I. Just got married a year ago. An iconic wedding, by the way. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm coming up on my one year wedding anniversary, October 22nd. I have two dogs, Navy and Indigo. They're named after Shades of Blue, which is my favorite color. Why did I not put two and two together? Mm, That's. Yeah, because Indigo, you know, is it a shade of blue or purple? It's right in between, Mm -hmm. you know? True. So, also, I call her Indy a lot. That's what she goes by. So, it's hard to put together, but Hi. she's so cute. Thank you. She's my baby, and I love all things health, wellness, lifestyle, beauty. I love beauty, but my first and foremost, my first and love yeah. was fitness. Yeah. And so I started posting on YouTube in 2016, January 2016, and it was all about fitness. And slowly I started branching into other avenues that I love. But at the end of the day, like my tried and true will always be mental and physical wellness. Mm -hmm. And I'm on YouTube. Well, eh, I could be better. I used to be (laughs) every week. Well, you have a lot of platforms to keep up with now. Mm-hmm. So you have YouTube, YouTube, Instagram, mm-hmm. TikTok. She's a yes. big TikTok girly now. That's a new thing for me. But you're popping off. I have found so much joy in TikTok. Really? I when I first started YouTube, I felt so creative. Like it was my creative outlet. I loved creating videos. And then after four or five years, I was like, okay, I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. I feel like I had done it all, and I was very nervous about posting on TikTok. I was mm-hmm. very intimidated by it. I also felt like really late to the game because everybody was already on it. Yeah. And December of 
last year, 2022. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And you're at like two and a half million followers. Is that right? Which is a huge accomplishment. Like that's huge. Do you realize how huge that is? Yeah. You should be so proud of yourself, especially yeah. with keeping up with all your other platforms. Yeah. Because Instagram, you have like well, almost three million followers. YouTube, millions. You also created something called the Alive app. Yeah, that's my baby. Which I love. Emily loves. Like, we rave about it all the time. It's the, hands down, the best fitness app I've ever used. Thank you. And you know I would tell Thank you Thank you so much for saying friend. that. I that is, you. like, my everything. No, you killed it. Thank you. And the reason, I will tell you why I love it, which we're kind of, like, getting off topic. But the reason why I love it is because I always get very intimidated in the gym when it comes to not knowing the names of certain workouts or my form. And I love that I can just watch you yes. on the app, yes. show me how to do it so I don't feel like a fool. And it also just kind of brings me comfort because I know you're my friend and I'm yeah. like, oh, she's working out with me. Yeah. Slay. Well, that's my goal is I want to be your best friend with you every step of the way because your health and wellness journey is so intimidating, mm-hmm. especially if you've never grown up being active. Yeah. You have no idea where to start. So I, I created a live for that exact reason. Yeah. So thank you so much for saying that. Oh, I just love it. And That's it's, my baby. The other thing too is you're probably the most aesthetically pleasing person I know when it comes to like your makeup, That's your crazy. home, your emojis you put on your posts, <gasps> but your app follows that too. Thank and you. for someone that appreciates that and finds joy in that, that's just like an extra little touch. Thank you. I yeah. will say... The design of Alive is my one of my favorite things about Alive. Oh, I love it. Our designer and graphic designer is just, mm-hmm. she's amazing. And the colors. Yes, the colors. Oh, it, make it makes it feel so like warm and welcoming. Yeah. And like not sterile, which gyms are. Yes. Oh, so, I love it. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so how did the Alive app come about? When did you get the idea like, I want to make a fitness app. This is what I want to do. I started working, finding a team in 2019 to develop the Alive app. There used to be a lot of apps in the industry and they go to influencers and fitness creators and they say, hey, we'll take your programs and we'll put it on our copy and paste app. And it never felt right to me because health and wellness is so much more than here's my workout plan, enjoy. And so I always knew I needed to do it my way if I was going to do it. I didn't want a copy paste app that you see on the market. Mm -hmm. And also my approach to health and wellness has always been a little bit different than a lot of people in the sense where mental wellness is so important to me and your mental and physical health go hand in hand. Absolutely. And so I felt what was missing from the market at that time was an app that, that, focuses on both not just your physical journey but also your mental Mm -hmm. and so I actually saved up every single cent that I made from creating content online and I put it all into a live it was the biggest investment I've ever made I did not know this yes it was so scary because you, I had no idea what was going to happen. Or if it's going to be successful, yes. you're going to lose everything. Yes. Yeah. And so I that was the biggest investment I've ever made. It was the biggest jump I've ever made. I had a such bad imposter syndrome for so long because I was like, what am I doing? I've brought on this team. We are creating this app. What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. And we launched it in January of 2020. And I'll never forget that day because you, when you work with technology, you know what? You could find a bug and you have no idea where that bug came from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's always a lot of bugs. Yeah. But we launched in January of 2020 and that has just been my full-time gig since we launched. And it's it's just so successful. And like I, people rave about it for a reason. And being a consumer and someone that pays for the app and uses it, I can attest, like, there are reasons why. And I think it's because it actually works and helps people. Thank you. So you should be very proud. 
Thank you. I it's love it. it's still very small and mighty, and I hope one day it, it I hope it continues to grow. But we are a very small team, mm-hmm. but we all have the same vision for a live, and we all want women to feel comfortable in the gym. We want women to know the importance of both mental and physical health. Mm -hmm. So we created things like a gratitude journal and every challenge that I launch has daily quotes, encouragement that you can find every day. It's not just about your physical journey, Mm -hmm. but the whole aspect of building and living a healthy lifestyle that's maintainable. And I love that. And I think that's why it's so different from everything else because people don't think about that. And I think that's something that's very personal to you, which you've mm-hmm. talked about, which she was just on the cover of Women's Health, which Whitney does not brag, but I will brag for a second. And you look beautiful. Thank your you. Your article was incredible. Thank you. But you talk a lot about your mental health struggles that you've mm-hmm. gone through in the past and situations that have happened. And I think it's so personal to you that you wanted to bring it to other people as well. Yeah. Has fitness helped you with your mental health journey? Is that kind of... Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's actually funny because when I first started working out, I was like, the gym is my therapy. Mm -hmm. And then I actually had to go to real life therapy. And I was like, okay, the gym is not my therapy, but it definitely aids in my wellness and health. Yeah. And so when I first started working out, I needed an escape. Like I didn't know... I didn't know what was next for me. Mm -hmm. It's like those early 20s where you're like, okay, what am I doing here? Yeah. And I almost moved back to the Midwest and left college. And I moved home for the summer. And my dad was like, girl, you got to do something. We got to get you moving a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up a gymnast and I didn't have that anymore. I cheered for a year in college. I didn't have that anymore. And so that's when I dipped my toes into weight training And I immediately fell in love because it was an escape for me. Mm -hmm. That was my time where I could just block out everything else in the world and focus on myself. How old were you then? I was... How old are you when you're a sophomore in college? 20? 19, 20? 19, 20, yeah. Yeah. So that's when I started weight training. Dang. Crazy, huh? Well, I just like... You're just like such body goals. Like I, I literally look at Whitney and I'm like, if I could have that rear end. Oh, but I'm getting there from the Alive app. Yeah. And what do we have? You already up? are there. Legs get it. Legs get it. It's my brand new program I just launched. Tell me about that. Well, I've have seen such a huge difference in my glutes over the last year because I've really focused more on glute dominant training, mm-hmm. which I'd never done before. And so I took all of that knowledge that I've learned and I have this amazing partner who his name is Justin Olson. He has so much experience in the field and he actually works for Alive full time and we create all of our programs together because although I love what I love and trust what I do to bring somebody else in who is so experienced in the field. He has trained people for over seven years in person. Mm -hmm. It's just a different vibe it's a different experience and they can also add things maybe you didn't know about or yes things that you didn't even think of exactly mm-hmm. and we work so well together and not one workout goes on alive without his approval that's amazing and it, that was so important to me that was the very first thing that I did was bring Justin in mm-hmm. because his experience and expertise is so important to me because I just think you have to have more than one set of person looking at something as important as somebody's health and wellness journey yeah so kind of going back a little bit what was your childhood like how how many siblings do you have I know Mm -hmm. I I know Eclair yes because we met in the Hamptons which we love you Eclair she's we love you but tell me about like your childhood your background you said you're a gymnast yes that's kind of where like working out started for you yes when I was seven years old I got invited to a birthday party at a gymnastics center Mm -hmm. and they had a rope that went all the way to the ceiling and I said great I'm going to climb that rope and I climbed it and then they asked my parents for me to join their gymnastics academy you got all the way to the top yeah and they were kind of freaking out because they're like how how's 
how's this girl getting it down? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember it. I was seven years old. I'm but my mom tells me the story. And it sounds like a good time. No, honestly, that's really impressive. Because sevens, I can see, like, maybe someone younger because they're so much smaller. But, like, yes. that's some upper body strength right there. Yeah, and I just went for it. And I loved it. And I did gymnastics from seven years old all the way through high school. Dang. Yeah, and that was my whole world. I also cheered alongside in high school. Mm-hmm. But gymnastics was my main focus and love and when i went to college i ended up cheering for one year okay and then that's when i found weight training but i loved gymnastics growing up that's really what gave me honestly a lot of things people don't realize how independent of a sport gymnastics is and disciplined very disciplined yes. very independent mm-hmm. and it builds such confidence because when you're putting yourself in a position where it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to land this backflip. Mm-hmm. You have to really trust yourself and it just builds a lot of confidence in oneself. So I'm very grateful that I did gymnastics for so long because I, I really think it formed me into the woman I am today. Yeah, that's amazing. And I I know a couple of gymnasts or people that have done gym like their entire life and they have the same exact response. Yeah. It just, like, it was their whole world. And yes. And it taught them so much growing up. I just think it's an amazing sport. It's an amazing sport. So how many siblings do you have? There's five of us in total. And I'm the second oldest. So okay. I have an older brother, and then there's me. A younger brother, Slade. Yeah, you guys always have the best names. Yes. Well, Austin and Whitney, they're fine. Yeah. But then you have Slade. Yes, so Slade sick. is iconic. Yeah, Eclair, that's my younger brother. Iconic. E. Claire is my sister. And then I have one more little brother, Deacon. And I told you, my mom had Deacon at 41 years old. Yeah, which honestly, Wit's mom, bravo. Yeah, shout out to Wendy. 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 We love Wendy. 41, that's amazing. I know. AJ, nothing but a number. I completely agree. And now my mom, my dad, and my little brother, they still live in the Midwest together, and they're just a little trio. The cutest trio I've ever seen. No, your family is all so sweet, but also, like, so gorgeous. Oh. I hope that's what my family looks like when my kids are... I mean, obviously. They will. Not people will be like, you're calling your kids ugly. (gasps) No. No. My kids are really cute, but... Very cute. Like, your family is stunning. Thank you. So, another thing I want to talk about, which I admire so much about you, because I have a close friend that struggles with the same, is your psoriasis. Yes. How old were you when you were diagnosed with psoriasis? 16. Tell me about that experience. I was sitting in class in high school and my elbows were just like a little crinkly and wrinkly. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I look at my elbow and I was starting to form little plaques. Mm. And I remember I would leave flakes of my plaques like my skin was flaking off onto my desk yeah. in high school yeah. and I was so embarrassed and it, no amount of lotion would change anything and when you don't know what this is you're just embarrassed yeah so I remember being like really embarrassed about my elbows because I had no idea what was going on and so we originally went to the dermatologist thinking it was eczema and I was diagnosed with psoriasis which is an autoimmune disease mm-hmm and it stayed relatively calm i think living in the midwest where it's a lot more humid was very helpful for my skin yeah and it's just progressively gotten more and more severe the older i've gotten Mm -hmm. which is interesting are you on meds for it so crazy i have never been able to get approved for medication until this week really yes i'm so happy for you thank you i know we talked about that when we were in the hamptons well i had a tough it's weird every time i go to the the dermatologist i love her she's amazing she is the first dermatologist i've had where i feel she really advocates for me Mm -hmm. and she has gone above and beyond to advocate for me and getting on medication because beforehand my psoriasis wasn't severe enough now my psoriasis covers 90% of my body and she said I'm definitely in the very severe category of psoriasis Mm -hmm. which was hard to hear 
because I look at my skin and I'm always like, oh, I don't need medication. It's not that bad. But over the last couple of months, it has been very hard for me Mm -hmm. to the point where it's never been about the looks. There was definitely a time in my life where, especially when I first started posting on social media, I wouldn't wear shorts to the gym. I know my plaques make other people uncomfortable, especially if they don't understand what it is. I get comments saying, oh, you have a ringworm or is that contagious? So to kind of avoid those conversations, I would just cover up. I've gotten more and more comfortable with how it looks. I love how it looks. I love being an advocate for psoriasis. Psoriasis sisters. Yeah, I have my psoriasis sisters. I love that so much. Thank you. And I've always been a little bit hesitant about being on medication because I almost feel guilty about it mm-hmm. because I love being an advocate for psoriasis mm-hmm. and I feel guilty getting on medication if it means I can't be an advocate for psoriasis anymore. But you being on medication does not take away the fact that you have psoriasis and the fact that you have been so open about it and give so many other people confidence about psoriasis. And that's something you should be so proud of because seeing you on the cover of Women's Health covered in psoriasis was one of the most empowering things I've ever seen. Thank you. Like just stunningly beautiful when i see your mic'd up not me tearing up i'm like such a mom <laughs> you doing your mic'd up on tiktok which is one of my favorite series ever the queen of mic'd ups right here it's just like you wearing a sports bra on spanx and you're covered and i see your comments yeah and it i understand people inquiring me because they're curious but there's yes. like a graceful way to go about it and i feel like sometimes they're not and you are always so kind and you educate people, which I yes. love. And I've told you in the past, there's someone very close in my life that has psoriasis, like very severe. And he's on a medication that if he wasn't in the military would cost $100,000 a month. That is not a feasible thing for any human being to be able to afford that. Yeah. And it just breaks my heart because like you advocate for so long for mm-hmm. so many years mm-hmm. until you finally get approved. But It just shouldn't be like that, which is a whole other topic of, you know, medical insurance and all the other things and treatments. But I'm so happy that you were approved, but it definitely does not take away the fact that you still have psoriasis. You're still an advocate for so many people and you also inspire so many people to be proud of having psoriasis. And I am proud of having psoriasis. Yes. But it's gotten to the point where I can't sleep through the night without having to wake up and scratch my plaques and I scratch my plaques to the point where I'm bleeding because I'm in so much pain yeah it doesn't matter how much castor oil and lotion I put on like my skin just hurts and it aches and I catch myself just scratching all throughout the day and I'm just covered head to toe and it's so crazy that my psoriasis has had to get to this level of severity to be approved for injections Mm -hmm. so i was approved this week for humira but speaking of cost it's so crazy because one dose one injection is thirteen thousand dollars i am so fortunate to have health insurance Mm -hmm. and my health insurance will cover just about ten thousand dollars how often do you do the injections so that's what's insane Is the first six months I'll have to inject myself two times a month. Okay. So that's looking at $3,000 in injection. Mm -hmm. So before the pharmacy will even send me the injection, they're like, we need you to apply for this copay plan to help get the cost down even more. So she said it might be as low as $5 in injection, which will be amazing. Yeah. And I'm nervous. I'm very nervous to start this journey. Yeah. But if it can give me just any relief, if I could be able to sleep through the night again without having my skin waking me up, I will be eternally grateful. And that's, I mean, that's part of the reason I just love you so much is because you're like, it's not about hiding my plaques or looking a different way. It's just, you just need comfort, which like no one would be able to... I can't even imagine 
that keep me up all night. And I see you scratch. Yeah. Like when we were in the Hamptons and you were yes. in the bathing suit, like you were always scratching. So you're like, yes. oh, I'm so itchy. Like everything's yes. flaring up right now. And I almost like, it's embarrassing because it's so mundane for me. It's like, I'm always just itching. And then like for even you to like notice in the Hamptons, I'm scratching. I'm like, oh, like this is embarrassing that no, I was scratching that I remember that much. because you were talking to us about it. Oh, okay. You were like, you, you were talking about the fact that it had gotten worse. Yeah. And it was flaring up. Yes. And you were just like, I just can't stop yeah. scratching. And I live in this constant, my psoriasis is very interesting because I do feel it is different. And that's what's interesting, right? Is one something that works for one person will work for another and I get sent messages and I get comments every single day saying to try this magical cure and this magical cure and this magical cure and I've tried them mm-hmm. and they don't work for me yeah and so I feel weird getting on medication finally because I feel like I'm giving up hope because I, I keep trying these magical cures and nothing's worked yeah and so I do feel like I'm like finally giving up you're not giving up. You because you can't say that you haven't tried everything. Yeah. And it's it's way more than your physical appearance, having plaques, yeah, being a psoriasis sister. It's the fact that you can't even sleep at night. Yeah. Like it's just physical comfortability. Mm-hmm. Which I think I know any normal human being would feel that way. Yes. You know? Yeah. At what age or when do you think you finally made a breakthrough with like rocking your psoriasis and being comfortable with it like how you explained in the past you didn't want to wear shorts to the gym like Mm -hmm. what what changed that for you my psoriasis just continued to get more severe Mm -hmm. and stress is a huge factor into autoimmune diseases Mm -hmm. and I have a very stressful life in the sense where I'm just trying to do a lot of things right now yeah and and take advantage of this moment that we're in that i feel so fortunate to mm-hmm. be in and the more stress i have and i've always been a high stress person but i just think the more severe it's gotten it just got to the point where i couldn't even hide it anymore i mean you've seen it it's it covers my body head to toe mm-hmm. and i have amazing women that support me and follow me online that gave me the courage to just show my skin Mm -hmm. and not be embarrassed and they make me look at my plaque so differently my friend Libby sent me a screenshot yesterday of a photo I posted and she was like oh my gosh this is my new favorite plaque it's the shape of a heart and I've never looked at that and been like oh that plaque is the shape of a heart I also love Libby yeah Libby I love love Libby she is just like such a like she just is happy like always just so much like you like yes radiates happiness she's amazing and i love that she sent that to you that's so cute and i'll just get comments where people will say your plaques look like a cheetah they make you look so powerful or your plaques look like cherry blossoms i love it who needs tattoos when you have these amazing cherry blossoms all over your back or people will be like i thought that these were white ink tattoos all over your back they were gorgeous so i do feel the amazing women online that support me have given me the courage to continue to show my skin yes and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Because I probably still would be hiding my skin head to toe. So with your mental health struggles mm-hmm. that you've had in the past, did psoriasis take part in that? Or was it just other things going on? Was it social media? What kind of... Because you got to a really low place that you yes. talked about in your women's health article. hmm were there certain things that kind of led you to that or was it just a lot of overwhelming things happening mixed with mental health? What was that scenario like for you? In 2020, well, in 2019, the most amazing person who played a a very large part in my 20s was diagnosed with stage four sarcoma cancer Mm. and just rocked my world and I I think a lot of factors played into my mental illnesses but losing Brian was kind of like the tipping point Mm -hmm. for me because 12 months after he was diagnosed he he passed away and it really just 
tipped it over the edge for me. I, when you lose somebody that was so near and dear to you and you lose them in such like a quick and tragic way. Yeah, so fast. So fast. 12 months later. Yeah, you don't, you don't even feel like you have a chance to say bye. And I didn't. Yeah. Because we were in the pandemic. Mm. And so I didn't get to say goodbye. Yeah. And I think a lot, I had a lot circling, a lot of factors played into it. But losing Brian was definitely the tipping point for me. And I've talked about social media and how the day that I attempted or thought to take my life, I had just finished reading an entire thread of the most horrible things I've ever said about me. And I read this entire thread and I went to drop my fiance off at the airport And I said, perfect. Nobody needs me here anymore. Stefan's leaving for the weekend. I'll just take care of this now. And in the at the very last second, because I I was driving straight into this super high, tall concrete wall. And you know when you're leaving airports and they're all like curvy and Mm -hmm. whirly twirly. And there's just this big U-turn that you have to take and it just has this massive concrete wall. And as I'm driving up to it, I said, now's the time. This is perfect. I'm done. Nobody wants me here anymore. They made that very clear in this thread. That I'm absolutely worthless. Comments saying I shouldn't have a platform I don't even look fit I don't have muscle I'm too skinny I'm too fat I shouldn't have a platform because I have a screechy voice they don't like how I talk they don't like my humor they don't like anything about me a hundred plus comments of just straight hatred and when you're already struggling with your mental illness one comment can just send you into a spiral Mm -hmm. and you work so hard to like let that go because you know that that gives them the satisfaction and in that moment after years and years I've already been doing this for seven years I was like I'm just gonna let them win (laughs) why not and I'm I'm very grateful because at the very and I mean very last second I said okay um, not yet. Mm -hmm. And within a week I was speaking to a therapist and the first person I went to was my mom. I got home that night and I, and I told my mom because my mom lost her mom to suicide. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was in third grade and my grandma took her own life and I was, I, remember processing that processing that as I grew up and and I never struggled with my mental health that severely that I ever thought of taking my own life and in that moment I go oh like I get it now and so my mom who had to live through this loss felt like the the person who would understand me the most and, and she did in that moment and I'm so grateful for her because she immediately helped me get help yeah. And make me feel not alone. And it's the craziest part is like knowing this story and I, it still just makes me so emotional. And it's it just shows because you're truly one of the happiest, most you just like we talked about before the podcast, like you just have an energy. And I feel like that's what we vibe. We just have this energy. And yeah. you, just, you make me so happy. You make everyone around you so happy. You just you're just you're just happiness and it's it just shows you just never know what's going on inside someone's head and what they're struggling with and I think that's very important for people to know because just because someone on social media is smiling and acting happy doesn't mean that they don't fight this internal battle every single day where people are literally telling you to go kill yourself yes and that you shouldn't be alive yes and it's 
it's just disgusting. And I always wanted to continue being that. Mm -hmm. So even when I started struggling with mental illness, I wanted to continue to be that positive note, that positive person for people who are struggling. And so I would get on my stories and be like, it's going to be a great week. We've got this. Immediately hit with comments. Toxic positivity. It's a lose-lose. It's a lose-lose. Yes. And so the phrase, it's a beautiful day to be alive, has always been how I start all of my videos on YouTube. It was hidden into all of my collection pieces that I made with Gymshark. I, it's just, it's my, it's my trademark. It's my thing. It's a beautiful day to be alive mm-hmm. and it's so crazy because one thing about that women's health article that i just loved is at the very end the writer said little did she know she was telling herself what she needed to hear the entire time oh I and love i just that. loved that and now yes. after everything you know when i first started struggling with my mental illness it was 2020 it's now 2023 i really feel like i've come out the other side and i'm so that's all credit to my amazing therapist. She gave me the resources. She taught me what to do. When you feel those depressive episodes come in and she's really allowed healing into my life. And alive just, it's a beautiful day to be alive has such a new meaning to me now. Yeah, and you you also have put in so much work and you know you gave yourself a second chance which i it's so big yeah because not a lot of people have that or were able to give themselves that and you also i personally know how hard you work every day to invest in yourself and your mental health which is huge yeah you know and you've taken advantage of those resources and haven't been afraid to talk about these challenges and again helped so many other people yeah that have maybe gone through that thank you so i'm proud of you thank you i feel like i'm a completely new woman because of it it was the hardest thing i've ever gone through when you don't want to be alive anymore like to get out of that hole to be in the deep that deep in the trenches to get out of it like i feel very proud of myself and i also feel like a completely new person so I do get comments saying, you're different, you're new, we miss the old Whitney. Well, the old Whitney hadn't experienced this level of severe mental illness before. Mm-hmm. But it really did, it's given me such a different perspective on life. And I used to just be such a powerhouse, like uploading weekly on YouTube, daily on Instagram. It was go, 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 all while building a life. And it's really allowed me to just take a step back and say, okay, it's going to be okay if I'm don't upload every day on TikTok. Mm -hmm. If my mental health needs this, great. It allows me to connect to people in a different way. So I really am so grateful to still be alive and to your point, have this second chance at life and to look at it so differently. And when you lose somebody so quickly and so fast, it just, it, it changes how you see things. Yeah. I value every single day now, truly. I love that. And speaking of a new life Mm -hmm. and a second chance, tell me about your cutie husband. What do you want to know? Tell me how you met. We actually met in the gym. I didn't know that. Yeah, crazy, huh? It's meant to be. I know. He was like, look at that girl. It really was fate because I had just gotten fired from my job. Oh, I didn't know that Yeah, so after, after college, I moved to a new city. I started a new job, and I had just gotten fired wait what was the job i worked in product development for a beauty company i loved it that's so you too i love it right Mm -hmm. not the you getting fired yeah but the beauty no both it makes sense (laughs) (laughs) they brought in somebody that had 40 years of experience and i was brand new and so i was let go and i told my mom i said i'm gonna try this youtube thing full time at that point i had already been doing it for eight to nine months and it was fate that I ran into Stefan because Stefan was in, was still in college and he was invited on a trip over their fall break and he didn't go. 
And so we met like in the middle of the day on a random fall day. We like bumped into each other at the gym at a time he normally would never be there. Okay. And I posted him on my Snapchat story. And I said, there's a really cute guy in the gym. I'm deceased. And both of our phones just blew up because we had so many common friends. (gasps) Yes. Someone routed you out. Yes. Immediately sent my story to him. And our friend Mason actually like exchanged our numbers with one another. He reached out to me. We went on our first date in November and we hated the date and we strongly disliked each other. Wait, what? Yes. Okay. Tell me about the date. Oh my gosh. What do you want to know? It was just like funky. Where did you go? Like, was it just awkward? We met at a coffee shop. Okay. But he didn't follow up the day of. Oh, yeah. He what followed up two days before. Like, oh, we'll do this Tuesday night at this time. Okay. And then all day Tuesday, I didn't hear a peep. So I'm thinking it's not happening. And also, at that time, I agree nowadays you should meet at a location. Mm-hmm. But at that time, I was like, why is this man not picking me up? Yeah. Okay. For safety nowadays, absolutely. Yes. But you should need that location. Was different, and I, I agree because we. Were, I was the same with David, but I totally get where you're going. Yes. Because you're like, I. You're not worshiping me. I don't Why have are you not at you. my yeah. doorbell with a bouquet of roses? Exactly. You haven't even asked for my address yet. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I didn't think it was happening. Lo and behold, he was waiting at the coffee shop the whole time. <gasps> so I drove myself over there. We met. He ordered himself hot chocolate, and I had nothing. And I was like, oh, okay. Why is this just so Whitney? I yeah, just love like that it's just so like in there. Yeah. It's just an interesting date. Mm-hmm. And I think we got way too deep on a first date than you should. Okay. We were just talking about like deep, the meaning of life, mm. very deep things. And we weren't really vibing. Okay. Yeah. And so we left that date. And I remember going home and talking to my roommate and I said I will absolutely never go on a date with that man again and he felt the exact same way he also did not want to go on a date ever again so how did we end up married yeah well you know I have to give all props to our friend Mason okay because he was relentless he wouldn't let it go he He knew we were soulmates and he made it happen and there was one night where I was supposed to be hanging out with Mason. We were, had plans to go bowling and just have a night of me and Mason. Mm-hmm. And he rolls up and Stefan's in the car. And I'm like, Stefan, did you know? And Stefan did not know. So Mason set us up that night. And yeah, that night I kissed that man and I was in love with that man. So what did you guys do on that date? Well, it was the three of us and we were bowling. Oh, it was all three of you? Yep, me, I Mason, Mason, and like, Stefan. Like, bounced out. Mason's no. like, no, I'm going to stay and, and, like, be a... Make sure this happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were bowling that night. We went back to my house. I remember Mason was talking to one of my roommates, and I was, like, really, all of a sudden, just into Stefan. We had met um, a couple weeks before that at the gym like I had seen him again at the gym and I was talking to him and we went to in and out with Mason again so it really is like yeah. Mason was the reason we are together shout out to Mace yeah because after that first initial day at the coffee shop I see him at the gym in January mm-hmm. we the three of us go to in and out after and that was the first time where I saw Stefan from a new eyes like a new lens I was like okay wait this is a completely different person than I initially thought. Mm-hmm. And then maybe a week or two later, we are bowling. And I'm not kidding. That was the night I fell in love with that man. That was it? Yeah. How long were you guys together before he proposed? A long time. Four years, I think. Three or four years. Yeah. Not like a super long time, yeah. but we dated. And I always was dating to marry. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a goal of mine to be married i i have seen my parents have this amazing marriage they are best friends i've always known that i wanted to marry my best friend and when i was ready to start looking for marriage i just told stefan right off the bat we started dating and i was like just so you know like i date to marry Mm -hmm. and if that's not in our future if you don't see me as somebody you could one day marry 
I gotta move on to the next one. Oh, that was me with David, and we talked about it in his episode, but, like, once he sealed the deal, after he was like, oh, yeah, I'll be the best boyfriend you'll ever have, and then he was like, actually, you just want to hook up. Stop it. And I blocked him on everything. (gasps) He had to go, this was, like, back in the day before, like, I don't even know if I had Instagram. He went to Verizon and got a new phone number so he could contact me. He did not. Yeah. He was, like, obsessed. That I was is like, so sweet. But I was the same way. I was never into the hookup scene. Never. I was never into, like, the casual dating. Like, I always wanted to be married and have a family. Yes. And so I feel you on that. Yes. Because I was like, I'm not going to waste my time if you're going to waste my yes. time. Yes. I have learned so much from my relationships in the past. I've always... I love being in relationships. So it, it never... The hookup scene, the random one-offs, it never was for me. Yeah. And I made that very abundantly clear to Stefan because to your point, I wanted marriage. I wanted a family. Like I want to build a life together and I want to do that with my best friend. And as soon as I told Stefan that, it just shifted. Our relationship became pretty like serious very quickly. Mm-hmm. And it was like so amazing to see this man who had no I don't think he was thinking about marriage but I got his head you know in the right space and there was no pressure there was no rushing I was not in a rush to get married but I wanted to ensure that that was something that was an option Mm -hmm. for us in the future and when he was open to it I was like absolutely like I First of all, I was already in love with this man. I knew he was in love with me because he did blurt it out accidentally several times. And I just knew, like, pretty quickly that Stefan was my person. And I, it's just it's just one of those things where you know, if, when you know, you know. Yes. On both sides. And I never believed that. Yeah. Everyone would say that. Or, like, mm-hmm. when you're not looking for it, love will come. No, it's true. It is. It's crazy. Like, I, I, I we talked about this again on David's episode, but, like, when we had our first conversation, it was like the movies where everything around me disappeared. I didn't know what the hell yes. was going on. I was just so invested in this man that I was like, yeah, you're stuck with me. Yes. Like, it's just like, it just like clicks for you. Yes. And it's such an amazing feeling. And I remember in the first few weeks of us dating, we would just stay up all night and we would yeah. order like pizza and cookies and we would sit on the floor like little kids and giggle and we would stay up until the sun came up there's not enough to talk about never You're just constantly talking, yes which is again like you have to marry your best friend yes it's the best and that's always been so important to me and i've dated people in the past where i felt when it came to our relationship i was in second or third place mm-hmm. there was always one of their guy friends that came before me and stefan just always put me first and i was his best friend yeah and I was so grateful for that. And he's such a sweetheart. I just he, met him for the first time today. But I mean, I've heard so many things about him. But he just like, you can just tell he's just a good guy. And thank a you. sweet soul. Thank you. And he is. Yeah. He's amazing. I feel very, very, very lucky to have found him. You guys are adorable together. I thank love you. your marriage. I want to hear the proposal story. Okay. Because I don't think I've heard it. I'm obsessed with the ring. When he knows I'm obsessed with her ring. But I want to hear the proposal. Okay, well, I've always been the girl that was like, hey, here's, you know, a ring. I never showed him rings, but I said, if you ever, if we get to the point where we should get engaged, do you want to get engaged? I'd love to go ring shopping together. Oh, hell yeah. Like, I just think it's so important to love, first of all, to do it together. Like, pick out your, that's what I wanted. It's special. Yes, it's yeah. not for everybody. I, I'm i not one for surprises, but I know a lot of women are, and they love to be just completely surprised in every single aspect. I get so embarrassed. I hate surprises. That's me. They mortify me. Yeah. I hate it. I told David, if you ever propose in public, I'll probably run away. Yes. So we did it. Because it's so, yeah. I just, oh, I can't do it. Like, the yeah. introvert in me just cannot mm-hmm. handle it. Well, I, my thing is, I'm like, I feel like it would be a, I told him it would be a forced reaction because I would be concerned about what people are going to expect me to react. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it has to just be natural. Yes. Yeah. So we started looking at rings in December of 2019. Okay. Yes. And it took me a while to like find what I liked. It's always different. Like the ring that you think that you're going to like, you don't like. Yeah. 
I had a completely different vision for my ring and I just told someone like and the jeweler that we worked with who was amazing this is my vision this is what I want and I'm done so we picked out my diamond and they did the rest and I had no idea when he was going to propose I knew he just promised me it'd be in that year it'd be in 2020 and I was like great any other information month week Good. day so time I have to look forward to January through December perfect yes and so there was like a few times where I was like it's definitely happening mm-hmm. it's definitely happening and then one thing I've learned about Stefan is he's not very good at keeping a secret and he just is such a routine man mm-hmm. that when something is different it's so easy for me to be like oh, oh, that's different mm-hmm. and I remember it was just a random Tuesday night he was like hey I have to go do something I'm like what don't you like how they like can't you can't even like prep what you're gonna say like right. go do something like yes hey I gotta go get my tires changed like anything no he's like I just have to go do something with my friend I'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> like Ready. see you later what <laughs> and he was just acting so suspicious so I just knew and he like we don't plan our dates it'll just be like a Saturday night and we're like date night let's do it why yeah. not but we don't like plan things in advance mm-hmm. and he's trying to set these dates He's like, okay, we are going to go on a double date this Saturday at 6 p.m. I'm like, okay, this is too obvious. This is too obvious. So I 100% knew it was coming, but I'm so grateful that I knew because, like I told you, I don't do surprises. Mm -hmm. And so everything about it was a surprise. I hadn't seen the ring. I had no idea where he was proposing, how he was proposing, but I knew going into it that that was probably going to be the night that I was engaged. So we drove up to a resort in the middle of the mountains and we had dinner and the whole time we're eating dinner i'm like was it really a double date yes oh okay. yeah with two of my best friends at the oh, time fun. okay so it was lovely okay and i'm like what is going on why are we eating i couldn't eat my dinner yeah i remember ordering dinner and i maybe had two bites because i was so anxious mm-hmm. and this man is cool as a cucumber like nothing's happening like nothing's happening mm-hmm. to the point where it starts i start questioning it i'm like okay maybe it's not happening maybe this is like a fake date that we're doing to like throw me off from when he really is going to propose and after dinner we start walking i think somebody from the resort was like oh we have this tonight you guys should come do this and so we're like great and he drives me up to the top of the mountain and I get out and there's just like this long path of rose petals and candles and like on the edge of a mountain, like the most gorgeous scenic oh background. There was nobody around, which I was so grateful for. Mm-hmm. It was just Stefan and I. And yeah, he proposed and I don't remember any of it because I was blacked out. Yeah. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. like once you realize you're like, oh shit, I was right. Like it clicked. Yes you don't remember anything and I remember like walking to it because we were like hand in hand walking to it I'm like I cannot believe this is happening like I have dreamed of this moment since I was a baby like I've always wanted to get married and married to my best friend and I was like I cannot believe this is actually happening and then your just mind goes black like he got down on one knee and I am like like I remember a word you said I don't remember a word he said and it was beautiful and we like had a campfire with our two friends that were there That's that so night fun. and we stayed in the resort that night yeah. so it was just a perfect I night love that. yeah and i love that he respected your wishes yes of it being private very private so i'm obsessed with your wedding like i know it's been almost a year but like mm-hmm. i still think about it thank you can you talk about your inspo a little bit because mm-hmm. it's so different than any other wedding i've ever seen i mean i have to give to. all credit to my wedding planner yeah didn't you say you were kind of just like okay take it from here yeah I was really struggling with my mental illnesses when we were supposed to be planning my wedding and I had several several meetings where she understood the vision Mm -hmm. she knew what I wanted I wanted to just once once we found the resort that I was going to get married at the whole thing just came together Mm -hmm. and so she found this amazing resort it has I think 30 rooms on the entire resort which was the perfect amount to book out the resort for the weekend so it was so private and it was just the resort was full of 
our wedding guests. Which is very intimate. Yes. Yeah. And I, I really can't take credit. It was all my wedding planner. And it's, it, it was so intimate, but stunning. It was like neutrals, yes. creams, yes. desert mixed with boho. Mm-hmm. Your dress, your hair was so simple and mm-hmm. elegant. It was just one of those like timeless weddings. Thank you. That like, I know your kids are going to look at and yes. be like, my parents are amazing. Yeah. Like, well, like it's going it. to it's be like a long term wedding. Inspo. Well, it's crazy because I actually got slaughtered for having a neutral wedding. But I'm what like, you guys, like, for? I am such, like, that's very true. But, like, I'm not going to, like, throw a random color into my wedding to just, like, appease. Just to have color. Yes, yeah. just to have color when, like, you've seen my home. Like, I'm very just, like, it eases my mind to yeah. have a neutral color palette. It's clean. It's simple. Yes, and there, this whole resort, there was just so much going on at the resort, so many textures and colors that I was like, I don't need to throw in, like, blue because it's my favorite color just to, like, appease people that said that I have too bland of a wedding because the texture in the resort is what I feel made my wedding so special. Mm-hmm. And we created these gorgeous arches for me to walk down the aisle. That's my favorite part of your wedding. Me too. The arches yes. are... I, there is not one wedding I can think of that had anything like that. And it's just iconic. My wedding planner made them for my wedding. Oh, I didn't So they that. were handmade and like brought into this like desert. That's incredible. And it was the best weekend of my life because that's another thing is it was a weekend. So we like all flew in on Thursday. We had a bonfire Thursday night. Friday we had like the guys were golfing the girls were at the pool or at the beach i had my extended family there stefan's family our closest friends and family and we just hung out all day we had the rehearsal dinner that night and then saturday i was stressed you know Mm -hmm. getting ready for my wedding Mm -hmm. but i heard my wedding guests were all at the beach having a great time that is iconic it was so fun you You only get that moment once. Yes. And so I just feel like you have to go all out and celebrate as long as you can with the people that mean the most. And And that's exactly what you did. I was so back and forth. I'm like, do we elope? Do we have a wedding? Do we elope? Do we have a wedding? And I think for me and Stefan, having a very small, intimate wedding was just the perfect move for us because I felt so much love that entire weekend. Yeah. And everyone that came to the wedding were meant to be there they were handpicked out of Stefan and I's friends and family and they were meant to be there and I had the best weekend of my life oh I love that and like I told you earlier I had dreamed about my wedding my whole life like yeah. I always wanted to be a bride and I'm so grateful for my wedding weekend I know that to some it could be so silly like a lot of women don't want weddings I always wanted a wedding. No, I was the same. Yeah. I didn't have one, but I always want a wedding, which is why in my 10 year, I will do something. You need to have a wedding. We're going to do a 10 year vow renewal in Italy. (gasps) That's our plan. Okay. But this isn't about me. This is about you. No. Um, And now you're coming up on one year. Yes. Which I'm so excited for you. You're going to do a little getaway. Yes. Which I'm so happy you can Mm -hmm. get away. When you got married, did you stay on that resort for your honeymoon or did you go somewhere else? No, we went to a different part in Mexico. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mexico's so fun. I love Mexico. Because you can like party in Mexico. Yeah. But then there's also resort life in Mexico. Yes. And get massages and have wine and tequila. Yes. It's just become a very, like, safe place for Stefan and I to escape Mm -hmm. to where we still feel close enough to home. Yeah. But it's also just an escape. And now it's just a very special place because we got married in Toto Santos. So it's just a beautiful place. We love it there. And I wouldn't normally ask this, but I can ask you because we already talked about it, but future plans for babies? Yes, I would love to have babies one day. Do you know approximately how many or are we just going to take out one at a time? Well, that's tricky Mm -hmm. because if it was up to Stefan, he would have 10 babies today. Yes. Like Stefan really wants to have babies ASAP. And me too. Like I really, it makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. I see how many women struggle with fertility. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that when Stefan and I are ready to have babies that we can 
mm-hmm. and and I will be so grateful because I have always I've always felt this might seem silly it's not gonna be silly but I've just always felt my baby's like spirit yeah with me mm-hmm. and I talk to my baby a lot and a lot of what I do in my day-to-day I'm like okay like with work right like Mm -hmm. I want to like push through this as hard as I can so that when I do have a baby I can just take a step back and enjoy my time with my baby and I hope that that is while I'm here on earth Mm -hmm. that I get to have this baby and if it's not that's okay like if it's an afterlife that's okay yeah I don't think it's silly because I felt that way like my whole life. I remember collecting baby dolls, like an absurd amount of baby dolls when I was like maybe in kindergarten and every single baby, I don't care if it was five or 50, were named Sarah because that was what I was going to name my baby. (laughs) And my mom said she was always concerned my whole life that I would have a child before graduating high school because anyone asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up and I said I wanted to be a mom and have a bunch of babies. Yeah. Like that's all I wanted. Yeah. And I feel the same in the sense of I only, like I remember struggling so bad at like 20 in nursing school and my only reason for graduating was because I wanted to be a mom and provide for my kids. Wow. And I like wasn't even close to having kids yet. Yeah. So I feel that energy Mm because that was what motivated me for everything in life because I was like, okay, I just have to graduate high school and then I go to college. And then once I graduate college, I get a real big girl job and then I get married and then I can be a mommy. Yes. And that was like my entire life. No joke. Wow. And I, just the type of human that you are, but also wife, the way you are with your dogs, and I tell you this a million times over, you are going to be the most incredible mother Like, I would never throw that around. I've seen some crazy shit in my career and people that just shouldn't have kids. Your children are going to be so blessed to have you guys as parents. I truly mean that. And I'm just so so excited. I'm so excited. I hope it happens for me. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that I can... I don't know if that's silly to say, but I hope I can give that to Stefan. That's something I do really want to give him. Yes. And... It's weird because I've never, like, I didn't grow up being like, I'm going to be a mom. Like, mm-hmm. I'm meant to be a mom. I didn't, I, I never felt that. But over the last couple of years, like, when you meet your partner and you're planning a marriage and you're, like, talking about kids, I know that's something Stefan wants. And it just really started to be a want that I wanted for the first time in my life, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't grow up being like, okay, I'm going to be a mom one day. Yeah. I didn't know if that was in the cards for me mm-hmm. or if that was something I wanted. But now it's like life is put into perspective when, like you said, you meet your person and your life is like falling into place. Yes. And then you're like, okay, so what do I want for a future? And then you also have this different type of want to be a mom because you have someone to share it with. And you want their baby. Mm -hmm. Like you want to make babies with the person that you love more than anything. Yes. And there's just nothing more beautiful than that. Yes, and I'm still so nervous. The second I find out I'm pregnant, I'm going to call you up. Probably crying because I'll be so scared. I'll be so nervous. I'll be here. You give birth. I'll be so nervous. I'm looking to fly. I'll be here. (laughs) You'll be my nurse in the room. Oh, no. She's out of retirement. Yeah, I'm like, make sure you have my bed ready because I'll be (laughs) moved in. And like all my children come. I'm just so excited. And I'm manifesting because obviously you guys aren't trying yet. But it's going to happen. And you'll be the best mommy and I can't wait. Thank you. I'm so excited. I feel a little bit, you know, I feel like we're there. Yeah. But I think we'll wait, you know. And you guys have. A little bit longer. You guys have done it. I mean, everyone's timing's different and right for them. But I feel like you guys have just done such a good job at just taking your time. Yeah. And enjoying your relationship together. Building your business and your careers and doing your home. and, And just everything is falling into place for you. And the timing is just amazing. And I think you've done a great job of being like, okay, I think you know, now mm-hmm. I could be ready, mm-hmm. which is so important because you don't ever want to resent your child Absolutely. or like having kids because yeah. you're like, I missed out on my opportunity to yeah. build my, my business or my mm-hmm. platform or spend more time with my husband. And I do feel very, very fortunate 
that Stefan and I have been able to have a relationship just us Mm -hmm. because I'm definitely gonna miss that time yeah everyone I mean I'm sure you get comments I get comments like you'll never be able to do that once you're married and have kids and I'm like okay well I'll just enjoy it while I can then but that's a sacrifice I'm I'm okay making if it means I get to bring a baby into this world which is like so crazy to even say it's funny to me because the people that will talk to me about it that are in my life that don't have kids I tell them I had a complete career change my life went 180 and it literally took off and our lives have never been better and that was all while my kids were already born and here so crazy and like babies and busy toddlers yeah they weren't like in high school gone all day yeah it's just you love them and it's nothing will motivate you more and I feel like that's why as a working mom you Mm -hmm. just thrive yes because they are your motivation for everything absolutely you know and I feel like I'm already thinking that way Mm mm-hmm in everything I do, I'll be like, okay, we'll do this because one day we'll have a baby and we'll, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited. I'm very I'm excited. excited for you. Cutting, I kind of have butterflies. Okay. On that note, Whitney Simmons, thank you for being here. Thank you so much so for having much. me. This is so fun. It was such an honor. Let's do one more cheers. Yeah? Okay. Okay. With our Coke Zero with lime packets, mm-hmm. you're going to drink it before you cheers mm. me. Oh, the pinky up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I get a pinky up. Cheers. Cheers. Studio. Thanks for being here. I love you. So happy to be here. Ah, love you.